Hi you all, it's Kia Ray coming back with another video. If you have not watched my first video, my MRKH journey, please go and watch it just so you can be aware of what MRKH is. And also this is a continuance of that video, so I don't want you all to be lost. So I'm going to be speaking on the process after I found out I had MRKH and just the journey of getting tested, seeing different physicians, and my dilation journey. When I first found out I had MRK age, if you can recall in my last, my first video, I was sad. I was depressed. I felt like less of a woman. I honestly felt like a hermaphrodite. I didn't know what I was. I just, I just knew that I never really felt normal. And then this just confirmed that I'm not normal. <laughs> so I was just like, uh, am I a woman? Like, what's going on? The first test that I did receive was my chromosome analysis. And that was just basically testing my chromosomes to just make sure I have all female chromosomes. And when that test came back positive, I must say I was really excited. I was just like, yes, so I am a woman. Just a pretty messed up one, but I'll take it. <laughs> I just want to be a part of the woman group because I identify as a woman. So when that came back positive... I was really excited. Then I had to do some thyroid test, hormone test, just to make sure that my estrogen levels were up to par, and they were. So everything else pretty much was normal, except for my uterus and my vag vag vaginal canal being absent. So I was like, okay, let's work from here. Where do we start? My OBGYN actually referred me to a endocrinologist that was a fertility specialist. Because our condition is so rare, a lot of physicians are new to it. They don't really understand it. They don't really know how to work with it. So I think it's kind of like a learning process for them as well, unless you go to an actual physician who only practices that or who works with that specifically. And, like, this was 10 years ago when I was in high school. So, you know, it they weren't doing that yet. Not that I knew of. And the physician that I went to definitely wasn't. So he was in, I believe, Jackson. Yeah, he was in Jacksonville, Florida. At the time, I stayed in Georgia. So we traveled to go see him. And he was amazing, actually. He was really sweet, really nice, and what I loved about him the most was that he was a very spiritual person. When I first got to his office, he prayed with me and just told me that this was the first case that he had had with MRK and that, you know, he was really, he was just really encouraging. We talked for hours, me, it was me, my mom, and I believe my grandma went, I'm not sure, but I definitely know my mother was there. So... We talked for hours with him, and he told me about the different options. But then he also told me that the first line of treatment that I would have to go through would be dilation before we move forward with anything. And that's pretty much what you're going to hear from any doctor. They don't typically like to go into straight into surgery. They want to try dilation first, just try to see if that'll work. And I do know some women who have had success stories off dilation. So that would definitely be awesome if you don't, if you can bypass surgery and just do dilation. Now, for me personally, dilation didn't work. It was just a really hard journey. And I applaud any woman who has done dilation and who completed it and have a normal sex life. To me, you are the strongest woman ever. So he gave me the dilators. Um... I'm going to show them to you all, but he gave them to me, and he was just like, okay, so this is what they are, this is how they work, and he suggested that when I get back home, because we were out of town, that I go to a physical therapist who will help me do this. So I was like, okay, you know, we can work with that. Thinking in my head, oh, I'm about to conquer this, I'm going to have a normal sex life before I go off to college, because this is my senior year of high school. So I really wanted to get all of this done in that window before I went to school. And I was just really motivated. I was like, yes, this is going to be awesome. I don't even have to do surgery because I, I, I went there 
anticipating that I would just have to do surgery. I didn't think that there was even another line of treatment. So he gave me the dilators, and I just want to show them to you all. I have a lot of them. Yes, I keep my dilators in a Crown Royal bag, too. Don't ask me why. That's just where I keep them. So he gave me the dilators, and I kid you not, you all, and this is why I said, like, when he ordered them, I don't know. I really don't know how he ordered them, but I kid you not, this is how he gave them to me. In plastic bags, like this. I don't know. So, he showed me them, and he just showed me how to use them. Showed me which ones that I would start with. And then we took the time to number them out. We took the time to actually number them out. So... He put the first ones in this little bag. These were my first dilators that I used. And uh, I'm not sure if you all can see the little numbers, but this was number one. And you see how tiny it is. This was just to get a penetration hole in me. This was number two. And they got a little bit taller. Same width, though. And this is number three. Just I'm going to show you number two again. And it just jumped to number three. So, see how thick this is? Yeah. And it's pretty much the same length. It's just thicker. Just FYI, I didn't get past number two. Sorry. I didn't get past number two. But it goes all the way up to different numbers, different lengths, different widths. And I, unfortunately, had glass dilators. Now that I'm speaking to other women in my support, support groups, I'm noticing that there are different dilators that you can use. Some people have plastic. Some people have rubber and they bend. That would definitely be the route that I would go. I definitely think that my dilation process was harder just because it was glass. I just wanted to show you all the last two. So... These were the last three. So this is one. This is the size that if I were to continue to dilate, that I would be able to secrete. And this would have been the width. With my dilators, my physician also gave me lubrication. So this is the lubrication that he gave me. Now, this lubrication to me, I did not like it. It was, first of all, it smells really gross. <laughs> um, the smell alone, I was just like, ugh. So, it smells bad and it irritated my skin. So, I took the liberty of going out and buying my own lubrication. So, this was what I had started using. And this worked really well. It is a thicker lubricant. So, it, it's a bit more messier, I will say that, but it worked better for me. Now, if you are in a support group and you know women who have dilated, definitely ask them as far as, like, lubrication because I do know that some lubricants work better than others, like in my case. I was set to dilate for... I believe he said six months. If I would have stayed on a steady course for six months, I should have generated a normal canal. And when he told me to dilate, he also told me to apply pressure to it. So he suggested that I use a bicycle seat. Now, we had to go out and find this. And when I found it, I was supposed to basically dilate and during dilation sits on the seat just to create pressure and I had to stay like that for he told me to start off with jump from different times so he told me to start off with 30 minutes after 30 minutes he said that I should be able to do an hour he suggested that I do twice a day and just his suggestion was just do it as you like in idle time and you won't think about it much do it when you're watching TV. Just sit on a bicycle seat. That didn't work. Um, needless to say, dilation wasn't for me. Like I said, I only got into 
dilator too. And I cried so many nights trying to do it. I It was just really painful. It was irritable. And it just, it wasn't for me. So I got my dilators. I took them back home. And the first week, I believe, I didn't attempt to do it by myself. I was like, oh, no. So I went to go see my OBGYN and showed her the dilators and, you know, asked her if she would be able to help me instead of having to go to a physical therapist. So she suggested that I go to a physical therapist as well. And she also suggested that I go to a um, psychiatrist just for my mental state. At the time, I was getting down on myself a lot and I was really hard on myself. And I felt like, um, you know, this, I finally felt like I had something to work towards before I wasn't seeing anything before she referred me to him. I just thought I had to have surgery and I didn't want to have another surgery. So I go and see the physical therapist and this is why I stress, stress, stress that when you go to someone to do any type of procedures or treatments, make sure that they are aware of what they are doing. Make sure you do your research. Make sure that, you know, you're just up to par as well. I personally didn't. Um, I didn't, I literally took this bag of dilators everywhere with me and thought that people were supposed to just know what to do with them. And I didn't even know what to do with them. So I went to the physical therapist took my dilators, and she was supposed to help me. Now, on the first visit, I thought it went so well. I was really excited because she told me that she was able to penetrate. And I was like, really? And I didn't, I felt it, but I didn't really, you know, I didn't know. At the time I was young, I haven't really, I hadn't really, you know, experienced or played with my body yet or got to know my body yet in a sense of that area you know I was just kind of standoffish especially since I found out that you know I couldn't have sex I was just like "Mm, okay so she told me that she was able to penetrate and she had me hold my finger up to where she had the dilator and I was like okay and I felt it I felt it go in so I was like yes okay this is gonna be a breeze (laughs) I went home and did it the exact way that she told me to, sat on my chair, and I was just thinking, oh, this is easy. I can do this. I'll be up to the large one in no time. So I go back probably like two weeks later, I think it was, because I was going to do each dilator for a week or until I feel like I was ready to advance. So after I had did the first one, I had actually started on the second one before I went to go see her. And I felt like I was ready to advance, so that was why I was going back. So she was like, oh, you're doing great. Now this time, my mom came around. I mean, she was there the first time too, but I guess she just trusted her to do it right. So she was like, oh, let me see. When my mom came around, <laughs> she told the nurse that that was my butt. I She literally had me penetrating my butt. And thinking that I was penetrating my, um, thinking that I was dilating my vagina. And I thought I was having success. So the lady was like, oh my gosh. And you know, I'm going to call someone else in here just to be sure. And my mom was like, it's really nothing to be sure about. I mean, I can see that with my own eyes. I don't understand So we went through that whole ordeal of, you know, feeling like, damn, like nobody knows what they're doing. So once we finally got it right, that's when the real dilation started. And that's when it just, it went downhill from there. So I was all excited thinking that, okay, if that wasn't too hard, then I could definitely do the real penetration, um, dilation. And it was just from the beginning, the first one, the little tiny one, it hurt so bad. But I was, I pushed through with that one. I was just like, you know what, let's just get it done. I, at night, in the morning, I would try to sit on the bicycle wheel 
and just at least with the first one I could do 30 minutes when it was time for me to advance I went back and saw her again and she was just like oh I apologize you know I was new to it and everything and I was just like you know even if you're new to it you should still be able to tell you know the anal from vagina but okay so we went back and that's when we advanced the advancement didn't go too well I couldn't I couldn't sit on the dilator and it really hurt like it hurt it so bad I would cry literally my mom would be trying to sit there with me and just do it like while I'm doing it just talk to me because I was trying to do it while watching tv and it just it was too painful I couldn't proceed so after that I kind of felt discouraged again I was just like you know every time I feel like I'm making two steps I just get pulled right back and I was it was almost time for me to go to school and I was like I really want this to be over done so I went back I had to go back for a follow-up um, with the doctor in Jacksonville and when I went back I told him I was like dilation's not working I'm not gonna be able to do it can we just proceed with the surgery please 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 I just want this surgery before I go to school and he was like telling me okay I'm not sure that I'm ready to proceed with that and I was like yes I'm ready let's go so with him he he had to refer me to he didn't have to but he decided to refer me to a urologist and a plastic surgeon the surgery that I was going to proceed with with him would have had to take a skin graft off of my butt to make a vaginal canal. I'm not really sure the name of that surgery. But that was why he wanted me to go see the plastic surgeon because he said the plastic surgeon would have to do that part of it. So I went to go see the plastic surgeon, spoke with him for a moment, and you could just tell to me that he wasn't really feeling it. <laughs> he was just like, okay, all right. So, went to go see him, and before I can go to the urologist, I had another appointment with my doctor in Jacksonville. So, I went back to my doctor in Jacksonville, and at that appointment, that is when he told me that he was not comfortable moving forward with the surgery, because I it would have been his first surgery doing um, an MRKH condition, and he just basically wasn't confident in it. And he told me that that would be a, that would have been an irreversible surgery if I would have gotten that surgery done. I wouldn't have been able to get another one done. And he just wasn't comfortable. When I tell you, my heart just sunk because I felt like that was the answer to all of my prayers. I just felt like I needed that surgery. And for you to, I felt like he kind of strung me along. You had me going to see all these specialists. You had me doing everything. And literally, I was on top of it. I was like, we got to do this. We got to do that. And then for you to tell me, oh, well, I just don't feel comfortable. And I just, I broke down. I was just like, you know what? This shit is never going to happen. I mean, why? So that was pretty hard time for me. And like I said, I was trying to get ready to go to college, and it was just a lot on my plate. So, and now, looking back, I definitely appreciate, I want to thank him, like, so seriously, because he could have did it, and he could have messed it up, and what I, where would I have been? So, in a way, it was kind of a blessing that he was able to actually speak up and say, I'm not confident doing this. I don't want to, I don't want to do it. Because that could have just went wrong. And um, at the time, I was very upset. I was like, you know what? Forget all of this. Forget you. Like, everything. But now I see that that was a blessing that he was able to do that. So, still kudos to him. He was still an amazing doctor. Otherwise, I mean, he was just so positive, optimistic. And even after he told me that he tried to, you know give me motivational quotes and just talk to me and telling me that, you know, if I need anything that I can come back to him and all of that. 
so fast forward, I go to school, um, and I step on campus already insecure because of the MRK age, and it was just horrible. So I go, and just thank God that I found an amazing group of women who just really uplifted and encouraged me without even knowing my situation. But, of course, you know, I'm young. Everybody's partying in this college. So I'm thinking to myself, I'm going to start. I'm going to start dilating again because I will be able to, you know, live my life. So I tried to dilate once again, and it didn't work, and it just put me back in a cycle. But I will say to any ladies that are in the process right now of trying to dilate, and are in high school definitely try to do it before you go to school before you go to college if you plan on going to college because it wasn't even that I couldn't really do it in college it was I didn't have the privacy to I had roommates you know it was freshman year and it's hard you know everybody walking in and out it was just really difficult and I actually feel like I had the determination then to just bear the pain, but I just didn't have the time or the alone time. So I would definitely say dilation is the step you need to take before you venture off into that journey. Other than that, so I stopped dilating. I got discouraged again, and I just kind of put MRK out of my mind. I went through my whole college career just not even worried about it no more. I was like, whatever. After school, um, I don't, I don't know. It's just like my body was broken. <laughs> I was so, I just got so emotional. It was like I had built up so much pressure that I literally, because okay, I'm known as Kia the hard ass or Kia like I'm a very goofy person. I love to joke, but. I built a wall up so far and so tough that a lot of people can't get through it. And a lot, I don't, I'm like a no nonsense type person because I just feel like I don't have the time. I just, you don't know what's going on with me. So I don't really want to deal. And it got to the point where I had finished school, I had secured an amazing job. I, I just, everything in my life was perfect to me, except this MRK condition, and except for the fact that my relationship and love life was non-existent, except for the fact that I couldn't have kids, and I was holding all of this in, like I couldn't, I barely could breathe anymore, I was just like, oh my gosh, and it got to the point where I just got so emotional, it's anything at the drop of a hat I was crying I would cry about anything even my best friends were just like what's going on with you (laughs) like you're really emotional lately and that was before I had told them about the MRK so a lot of them thought I was pregnant they were just like you must be pregnant because you're all emotional are you okay or anything of that sort so I was just like, no, definitely not pregnant, and I don't know why I'm crying. I'm talking about y'all, not just off movies or scenes. I would see a beautiful flower and just start crying. I would, it was crazy. I and even to this, like till now, I'm still, as you can see, I'm about to cry now. I'm like, now I'm a crybaby, and I went from being a hard ass to a crybaby, and I don't know. So that is definitely why I decided to confront in my cage again because I felt like internally I couldn't hold it anymore I was on I was at my breaking point I was just like you know I have to deal with this in order for my life to be complete I have to deal with this so that's when I researched again um in my cage and treatments and everything I knew that dilation wouldn't work for me I just, because I had tried, I was done with dilation. I I wanted the surgery. I wanted, I just had to have it done. And that's when I actually found um, Michaelis and Moore. It's a surgical 
group in Atlanta. They have actually three locations, but I'm doing the one in Atlanta. And uh, it just literally popped up out of nowhere. Um, that was the first search that came up when I looked for it. Went on their website, and they were just so informal. And the group of ladies that they have working for them, shout out to Ashley, shout out to Danielle, are amazing. Any question I have, they answer it. Anything that I need, they, they're just awesome. Kudos to you all. So, I just felt so comfortable. It just was like an automatic click. I was just like, yeah, I'm doing this surgery. And the surgery that I'm going to be doing is the laparoscopic Davy Doe neovaginal surgery. You, I'm bad with names, y'all, if you haven't noticed yet. So that is basically a laparoscopic and vaginal entrance surgery. I don't really know all the details on it as far as I can. I know it, but I can't really, you know, reiterate it to you all. So I'm going to leave a link below to their page. I'm not trying to sponsor. They're not sponsoring me or anything. I'm not trying to be an advocate for them, but their page is just, their website is just so informal, like informative. And it's amazing, actually. It gives you the pictures, the breakdowns, everything you need to know, and the different treatments. Also, I have a list of treatments that I got from a support group that I'm also going to leave below in the description box. So you all can go check that out if you are all considering surgery or thinking of another surgery. As I stated earlier, there are different dilators now. Um, they have the plastic ones, the um, rubber ones, and I would definitely not do the glass dilators. Like I said, I didn't have a great experience with those, and I just, I don't feel like anyone would, actually. I don't even know why they made those must have been a man so yeah um well that's pretty much my journey up to now i'm definitely gonna keep you all posted with my surgery and it's going it's happening in november i'm gonna take you all along for the ride and i'm looking forward to just a new beginning and just living my best life finally and addressing my what I consider as my biggest issues. Um, and speaking to you all definitely helped me. I know I stated that in the last video, but I get so many like encouraging messages and daily devotions that it's like I'm not crying because I'm sad anymore. I'm crying tears of joy. And I just, I wish this joy on all of my MRK sisters. It's amazing. So before I conclude this video, I just want to give a huge shout out to one of our MRK sisters, Janae Cook. Janae has created a Facebook page called Sisters Surviving Infertility, MRK Awareness, and it is a African American support group for MRK sisters. I know there's a lot of controversy revolving around this group, but I must say, as an African American woman, this group was well needed. And I feel it doesn't take away from any of my other support groups. I love each and every woman who has MRK age in their own light. And I love all of my support groups and I still post in each one of them and I still support everyone. You all, there's healing out here for everyone. It doesn't matter which group you are entered into. It doesn't take away from any support group. So I just definitely wanted to give that shout out to Janae and just let her know her MRK age sisters are supporting her. And of course, if you all know of any of our other MRK sisters that deserve a shout out or recognition, please just let me know and I'll definitely add it in the next video. But thank you all so much for just watching and listening and just showing me support. Um, as always, I'm going to leave a description in the bottom with my email address and Instagram um, name. So if you want to hit me up, if you have any questions or if you want me to do any videos addressing anything, just let me know, and I definitely will. Thank you all so much.